Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest, and today I've got the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Tinted, I'm getting all the words mixed up, Hydrating Skin Tint. Retails for $49 for 1.1 ounces of product. The Sephora website lists it as 1.2, but the packaging and the Ulta website lists it as 1.1. It's about $44.50 per ounce how many milliliters 35 mils i should know that by now i don't know all my conversions to metric but i pretend i'm gonna live in ireland someday let's check out what they claim about this one comes in 18 different shades i've got it in shade four which is light cool oh wait is it light cool hold on i already forgot fair cool that's what i thought it was a brain I'm, I'm only like half a cup of caffeine in. i'm way behind right now this is a lightweight skin tint that instantly boosts moisture levels by 52% for a dewy glow and provides a sheer veil of coverage for comfortable all-day wear. I did browse through the ingredients. I don't see any added fragrance. Looks like it's going to be very hydrating. Glycerin's way up there. Metafoam seed oil. We got shea butter extract. Squalane, plant-based squalane is way up toward the top, which is awesome. One of my favorite skincare ingredients. It is vegan. It is cruelty-free. And let's check out shade four, swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from Hourglass, the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint in shade four. Second, I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is Mac Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last, I've got from Went Wild, the Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. I haven't put any traditional primer on, but I am wearing my handmade Bakuchiol face cream, which I've been wearing as a primer lately. Uh, you can check out the link down below, qcsoap.com. Let's check out this guy. I typically don't wear like a silicone primer under things like a skin tint because my assumption is that I'm going to just apply a very light coverage kind of a face, you know, that kind of a deal. We've got a squeezy tube here. Using my hands because I don't know where my little butterfly mirror went. All right, let's check this out. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna use fingertips as that is pretty much what I would typically do with a tint product, a low coverage product like this. I'm gonna try to keep it on half of my face. Gonna use it up under my eyes as well. I do sometimes use a sponge to apply these, but when I go sponge route, the problem is that typically these are lighter consistency and the sponge tends to soak up more of it and I just don't want to waste product. I'd rather it be on my face. This blends in nicely. It's not sticky. It's not greasy feeling. It's just a nice, it feels kind of like a moisturizer really. And I would say it is definitely sheer. A little bit of coverage. I mean, I do see some redness correction. My chin's always red, so that's where I look. So I am getting a little bit of correction, which is what I would expect from something like this. Still seeing sunspots poking through, but doing a little bit of color correction, so that is nice. All right, let's 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 get the other side going. Same, pretty much the same amount here. I'm probably using more than I need, which is good because we'll see if this is tolerant to the run and gun makeup, you know, being super fast and imprecise and because <laughs> I am kind of run and gun in it this morning. Typically I like to have at least an hour to sit down and do my makeup and film a review before, oh, yeah. see, look how good I am at life. It's because my nails are getting so long that I get product underneath them like crazy. Yeah, I usually give myself an hour to film and do my makeup, uh, but I have 35 minutes today, but we're still gonna do this. We're gonna do this, cause you know, I'm going light coverage anyway, so it's not gonna be a full face. I mean, it is gonna be a full face, but not a very elaborate face. All right, let's get the spot that I missed over here. <laughs> let's zoom in and take a look at this one. 
Yeah, I think sheer coverage is an accurate description of this. You know, it's not super dewy. I was expecting a little bit more light refle reflect and glow based on the dewy description, but it doesn't seem super dewy. The It just seems like a nice, I would call it a satin finish on me. I'm going to hope that it warms up to my skin just a little bit because I've got a little bit of polka dot pores going on on my nose and I can kind of see it clinging to texture on my forehead just a little bit but that also could just be the fresh applied nature of it at the moment but I can also see it you know clinging to some pores along my temples you know let's just kind of hope that it's gonna melt down and warm up and and melt into the skin and become a nice even veil as they say <laughs> Let's check the time. It is 11.46 a.m. Let me go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. Back with the hourglass veil. It is working just as intended. Nothing, no trouble blending. Did not have to set it with powder. I thought about setting it just to get maybe a smidge more coverage, but I didn't. And it looks lovely. The glow is starting to, to as it warms up, it is starting to look a little bit more glowy. My forehead has calmed down in terms of the the product that I was able to see on top of the skin, it has settled in just a couple polka dot pores still on my nose. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. But so far so good on the rest of my face. My eyes are the Merit Solo Shadow. Ever since I picked this up, I've been wearing either this or the uh, ColourPop Jelly Shadows as my like quick makeup. This one is in the shade Studio. I did a video with these. They're so pretty. I'm going to get more of them because I want some colors. This is this one I took all the way. It's my whole entire base, my lid and into the crease. And I just blended it with my fingertip to get it to be transition levels, sheerness. Uh, then I put in a little bit of deepening and glitter from the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. Uh, Merit. Flush Balm is my blush. Flower Heat Wave Bronzer, no surprise there. I do have a little bit of the Day Glow Highlight Stick from Merit. I just felt like I needed a little bling. Needed a little shiny. Needed a little something something. My brows, I am thoroughly enjoying the brand new Jones Road Brow Gel. This is in Brunette. And in my testing so far, it has been enough to hold up my brows without any additional products. And this, if this holds out, I'm gonna give it a few more days because I've been indoors in air conditioning. I wanna go, like today I'll be at work, it's hot outside, I have to walk like a quarter to a half mile a day back and forth from the building outside. So we're gonna see if this holds up. But so far I've been having really good luck with it. I have nothing else on my brows, literally just this. And instead of my whole three-step thing. Now normally I would fill in my brows with the pencil because you know this one's got the little divot that's missing there and whatnot but I'm in a rush so I skip it and that's what I'm wearing there and my lip is once again the forget the filler gloss from Lawless mascara is also Lawless one and done what is the color Sherlock I need you the color is something about a rose. Rosy outlook. I knew it was something. It's almost clear. It's like the slightest pink tint to it. I'd call it clear for the most part. There you have it. Uh, I'm going to go about my day. Yes, I'm going to get a sandwich before work. Then I'm going to go to work. Then I'm going to work. Then I got to pick my mom at the airport. And yeah, that's my day. I'll be back with a daylight check-in. And then I'll come back tonight give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, it is about 4.30 p.m. It is hot out here, holy cow. I am uh, getting ready to go to my last class of the day. I just gotta look in the mirror in the bathroom and uh, everything's looking good. I like this uh, formula. I'm gonna step into the full sun, but it is holy cow levels of bright. I can't, oh, I can't even see, but hopefully you can see something. Oh my gosh, cannot open my eyes, holy cow. Ooh, much better, much better. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Shade match seems spot on. 
happy with that choice. The dewy finish is uh, looking more dewy now. I'm not sweaty, I have not been outside. This is just, uh, I just stepped outside from the air conditioning. So anything you see is the finish of the foundation, not the, I'm not any kind of sweat, even though it is roasting out here. I'm gonna go back inside. So I will see you guys tonight. 11.05 p.m. Let's take a look at how the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint held up. I would say super comfortable, super lightweight. It has vanished a bit over time. It has degraded gracefully, very gracefully, I would say. Uh, blush, bronzer, highlight are still intact, but I think they stayed put because they were like powder setting this product, you know what I'm saying? because pretty much anywhere I don't have powder has no visible product left except for a few polka dot pores still visible on my nose. But generally speaking, I think it was super comfortable. I think it held up well. And let's zoom in so you guys can get a look at what I'm seeing in my 10X mirror here. The product didn't really move around. It didn't bunch up. It didn't settle into any lines. I do think it was nicely blurring and smoothing to texture. The dewy finish did not accentuate texture, which I am glad for. I think it held up very well. It settled down on my forehead and didn't leave those kind of traces of product that we started out with. It did melt down. The only place it didn't completely become a veil was my nose. And so pretty good performance overall, I would say. They call it long wearing and we are about, are we, we're almost at the 12 hour mark. So for a skin tint with this little of coverage, I think that's really good hold wear over time, you know, I don't think there's much left like my T-zone where there's no powder whatsoever. It's pretty much disappeared, but any place that has powder does seem like it all stayed put. So maybe setting this with powder would also help longevity, but it wore pretty well. So if I had to give a grade to the hourglass veil, I'm going to go a minus. Polka dot pores drive me a little nuts. So that's one of the things that I'm like, ah, that, that's a, ah, good. But really everything else is pretty wonderful with this one. If you have dry skin, I think it is a definite yes. Maturing skin, I don't see any red flags. It's, it's really nice. And this is probably strange, but the cap is square. And I like that because it stands up easier for some reason. I, I might just be weird, but I feel like square stands up more easily or doesn't knock down as easily as round. I don't know. Do you guys agree? Am I, am I just strange? I mean, I am, but is that a thing? Let me know in the comments down below. There you have another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books. If you like foundation reviews, if you had fun with this one, please give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments, what would you like to see next? I keep a running list. I buy them whenever I can. And you know, we're kind of approaching fall. Don't we have another uh, Sephora sale coming up? TikTok, are we there yet? Oh, I took my watch off to start charging it. I was so close to washing my face. I turned the water on after taking my watch off and then remembered I need to film this outro. So that's how comfortable this is. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.